Good day to you. My name is Mr. Gaff, and today I'll be comparing two of the Terran Republic light machine guns, the T9 Carb and the T9 Carb S. This video, just like all my other videos, has time codes in the description, so you can skip around. So the Carb is the default heavy assault primary, and has automatic and semi-auto firing modes. The Carb S is a purchasable variant of the Carb, and costs 700 station cash, or 1,000 inserts to unlock. Unlike most Model S variants, the Carb S does not have a burst fire mode. The damage on the Carb is standard, starting off at 143 damage at 10 meters or less, and falling down to 125 at 65 meters. The reload times are ridiculously long. The Carb's short reload is 5.4 seconds long, and the long reload is 6.2 seconds long. The Carb S is, is even longer at 5.5 seconds for a short reload, and 6.5 seconds for a long reload. The magazine size somewhat makes up for this with 100 rounds per clip and 3 extra clips. You have to remember this is a Terran Republic rifle so you're gonna have that extra ammo but it's also gonna chew through it really quickly with the high rate of fire. That rate of fire is 750 rounds per minute on the Carb and 698 rounds per minute on the Carb S. The projectile velocity comes in at 600 meters per second, and the time to kill on the Carb is 0.48 seconds, and on the Carb S is 0.516 seconds. Now that I've finished overwhelming you with stats, I'll explain myself a little bit more. The Carb is the perfect example of a default starting weapon. It gives you a little bit of everything, but fails to excel at anything. For example, the Carb has a high rate of fire and high clip size. This would seemingly make it a decent close range contender, but the bloom and muzzle flare while shooting fully automatic will quickly put you off target. The relatively high projectile velocity could theoretically also give the carb some long range accuracy, but the uncontrollable left and right recoil, as well as the fast fire rate won't help you land too many shots on target. The carb S is the variant that tries to fix some of these issues. Although it was rumored that the S had a burst fire mode, it unfortunately does not. The S features a slower rate of fire and minimal increase in recoil, which can improve its control at long ranges over the carb. On top of that, the larger attachment field that includes the 2x reflex, 6x scope, and compensator can also help extend the effective range. The carb S could also be fitted to perform better than the carb at close range, due to the availability of extended magazines and soft point ammo. However, I feel that the large decrease in rate of fire compared to the carb greatly outweighs the effectiveness of a few more attachments. Burst firing on both variants is essential. I generally fire in 5 shot bursts, but I felt there was a significant downtime between bursts, which really limited the time to kill at anywhere past 20 meters. I'm not sure what that what was contributing to the downtime between bursts. I think it might be my mouse or my input, but it was definitely noticeable when I was trying to burst fire the carb. The carb is also a luck-based weapon. The uncontrollable recoil and large bloom means that you can kill an enemy in a single second or not even bite into their health based on where your shots actually land. The weapon really only shines in places where bullet spam is an advantage. This includes places like the bio farms or when you are trying to ward off enemy fighter pilots with a steady barrage of bullets. Another thing to keep in mind is the flinch mechanic will be in your favor with the carb. As long as you are hitting your target, they won't be able to fire back as effectively with all those bullets in the air. In terms of attachments, I ended up going with a silencer and a one times reflex, which you can see in just about all of these clips. What I felt was a huge flaw of the weapon was the muzzle flare, was covering up my sights when I was shooting like a night or in close quarters. I have enough trouble spotting the stupid sneaky Vanu at night without intentionally blinding myself. The next step I would take towards the attachment field would be to get a forward grip, which will give a noticeable difference given the weapon's high rate of fire. But the unique thing about the carb is that it doesn't really require a full attachment loadout to perform as it is intended to. The Carb S has a slightly wider field of attachments. I'd steer clear of high velocity ammo since the recoil is already rather excessive. 
My eventual attachment setup would be the MH2 reflex compensator and either extended mags or forward grip to try to minimize ridiculous reload times or recoil. Beyond their performance, the weapons don't really hold my interest very much. The Carve is a good starting gun, but I'd rather spend my certs toward the MSWR than the attachment field. I gave it a rating of 5.0 since it's the most average a weapon can get. The Carve S got a much lower rating due to its ridiculous price and poor attachment field. Where many S variants get an underbarrel launcher or a burst fire mode, the Carve S only has the unique extended mags which isn't really that unique or useful with the already large 100 round clip. The S therefore came in at a measly 3 in my reading. Your mama so fast she thought the T9 car was a turkey knife. <laughs> so that's it for this weapon review. The next one will be on all the SMGs, followed by the bolt action snipers and the long range carbines. I will also do a review on the pump action shotguns once the second series comes out. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.